When it's all said and done, David Gordon Green will be known as the guy who was handed two of the most iconic franchises in horror and somehow managed to fumble both of them. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? When his daughter Angela and her friend Catherine show signs of demonic possession, it unleashes a chain of events that forces a single father, Victor, to confront evil. Terrified and desperate, he seeks out Chris McNeil the only person alive who's witnessed anything like this before. Some people looked at me crazy when I said that I had just watched The Exorcist, the original Exorcist, for the first time just a couple of years ago. For whatever reason, it was one of those classic films that eluded me throughout my entire life. So in effect, I watched The Exorcist after I'd seen a whole slew of other demon possession movies that have come out in the modern era. And because of that, I came to the conclusion almost immediately that while a lot of those modern movies owe a lot to The Exorcist, and were probably even influenced by it, they really aren't comparable. The Exorcist, as it sits, is so much more than your typical exorcism movie. God damn right, that's the only way I work, Cap. When The Exorcist originally came out, people had never seen anything like that before. And if we're being honest with ourselves, they still haven't. What David Gordon Green has managed to do with The Exorcist Believer is the same thing that he managed to do with his Halloween trilogy. He has misunderstood, misinterpreted, and missed the point of why people like these films to begin with. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. As a result, he's made a film that yes, has exorcists in the title, but it really doesn't share any of the characteristics with the film that it's supposed to be continuing on from. A common problem amongst modern horror legacy sequels. When it comes right down to it, The Exorcist Believer feels like just another demon possession movie. There's nothing really special about it, and if that doesn't make it sound like the opposite of what a Exorcist sequel should be, then I don't know what will. That makes sense. Early in the film, to its credit, it at least tries to do something different. Now, a missing person's concept is not a new concept, but it is when it's in an Exorcist movie. And this is where I thought this film would separate itself from all the other films like it. Unfortunately, that portion of the film ends somewhat unceremoniously and abruptly. And this, my friends, is where everything takes a turn for the worst. And here we go. You know it's a problem when the portion of the film that deals with demon possession directly is probably the worst part of the film. Mostly because it's not really showing you anything you haven't already seen before in other movies, outside of there being two possessed girls instead of one. Which feels like the cheapest and most unimaginable way possible to try to be different. Sometimes more is less and bigger isn't necessarily always better. Congratulations, you played yourself. As all of this is going on, it falls into the typical legacy horror trope of going through the greatest hits and trying to incite a nostalgic reaction. The whole reason that the character of Chris is brought back in this film is they were trying to do the Laurie Strode thing and it just felt lazy. And when you see how she's actually used in the film, it feels like there's no real reason for her to be there. Outside of delivering exposition about what happened in the first movie, just in case you didn't know, that's where she came from. Is everybody paying attention? Another thing that jumped out to me is how this film feels like it's trying too hard at times. The original Exorcist was genuinely unsettling and disturbing, and that had a lot to do with the atmosphere established by director William Freakin. He did things in that film from a filmmaking perspective that made you feel uneasy even when you didn't think you were supposed to. Like the scene where they're running tests on Reagan, and it's just as horrific as all of the demon possession scenes. And I feel like Believer wanted to do something similar, but it took a much more generic approach. Put some effort into it! The examination scene in this film feels more awkward than it does unsettling. I get that the situation is awkward, especially if you're a woman, but it doesn't feel like that moment fits in the context of the movie they are trying to make. And that goes back again to these filmmakers not truly understanding what they are working on. I don't get it. 
As far as the characters go, every single one of them are about as boring and forgettable as you would think. Most of them are depicted as more of a stereotype than anything. The main character of Victor is just so emotionless throughout most of this film. I honestly couldn't tell if his daughter was possessed or if he was on sleep meds. He was just so calm throughout this whole situation, and I guess that's supposed to play into the message that he's not a believer. A message that the film unintelligently beats you over the head with, by the way. Message! But it's like, at some point, can we relay that this character is actually concerned about what's going on? It will probably make him a bit more relatable. And I just didn't feel any of that through his performance. Even how they come to the conclusion that their daughters are possessed feels very random and unearned. The religious mom in this story basically just blurts out that, yup, they were trying to talk to spirits and they accidentally let a demon in. How the f*** did she jump all the way to that conclusion? No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. It gets the people going. The finale of this film had me scratching my head also. Gone are the days of needing a old priest and a young priest to deal with this type of situation, I guess. Apparently these people being unified in this moment is the only real way to defeat this madness. It kind of felt like evil dies tonight all over again without the cringe chanting. It just felt so anticlimactic. And like the challenge that was built up and established in the first film for defeating an entity like this was completely undermined in this film and made an exorcism feel more simple than it probably actually is. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. Sure, there's an added wrinkle of there being two possessed girls, and that does come into play, but even how that conflict resolves itself felt very rushed and unsatisfying. Word on the street is that David Gordon Green has signed on to make three of these movies, and after seeing this movie, I think I can speak for everyone and say, let's hope that sequel never happens. Oh man, I got peanut butter on my penis. And that's nothing against him, he's probably just better suited to be working on other things. The Exorcist Believer just didn't leave much of an impression on me. It's another example of why the legacy sequel trend needs to die a miserable death immediately. They typically do not channel the same energy of the originals like they promised, and they really aren't adding anything new or interesting to the legacy of these franchises. So what's the point? Don't bother. Hopefully this is the nail in the coffin for this played out and creatively unsuccessful trend. The Exorcist Believer is just a nothing movie for me that doesn't need to exist, and I'm struggling to figure out what the motivation was to make it in the first place. And that's why I'm going to give it the careless Sam Gerard. I don't care! Y'all be cool. Shut up.